Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and another Star Wars Battlefront 2 video. This is my long promised, slow and arriving infiltrator survival guide, giving you the full overview of all infiltrator abilities and tips for using them on the battlefront. It's been four months since my last class guide, and in that time my subscriber count has doubled and my class guides continue to gain views. In the last 28 days, views and watch time have shot up, and my officer guide continues to be my best performing video. It's really amazing to think that a game which lost support nine months ago continues to hold interest for viewers. Now, more than ever, with Battlefront 2 having been free on the Epic Store last week, interest in the game is high, proving there is demand not only for this content, but for future installments of the Battlefront franchise. I hope that you'll like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell icon so that you'll be notified when I release future videos. More importantly, tell a friend about the Star Wars Survival Guide and share these videos in your social media channels. Thanks so much for your support so far. Like the Enforcers, the Infiltrators have unique abilities which make them especially effective. But unlike the Enforcers, which suit different, unique playstyles, the Infiltrators all fill a similar role to one another with more subtle differences between them. Let's dive into their abilities. First up is the Separatist Commando Droid, which first appeared in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Their E5 blaster rifle is accurate, with a slower fire rate than most blasters, but their deadly vibrosword is where they really shine. A skilled player can couple their blaster and vibrosword with the Commando Droid's dash ability for some deadly combos. The thermal vision is useful for spotting enemies, but doesn't last as long as the other infiltrators. The smoke screen drops at your feet, so its best use is to cover your escape, but thermal vision can give you a momentary advantage. Next is the Republic Arc Trooper. He features dual wield pistols, which at one time used dual triggers, but has since been changed to one button. Use your right ability to switch between an accurate, slower rate of fire, useful for medium to long engagements, or the less accurate but much faster rate of fire which is deadly at close range. Pressing the aim button activates the secondary fire which sends a blast of energy toward an enemy with mild homing ability. The helmet scanner highlights all enemies within a limited vicinity, and the shock trap is a throwable device which sticks to surfaces and knocks down enemies when triggered. This can be very useful for slowing enemy heroes. The KFX Spy is the resistance infiltrator unit, which I'll admit I don't use very much. His truncheon attack is similar to the Commando Droid's Vibrosword, but he lacks the same dash ability to quickly close the gap. His blaster's fire rate is dreadfully slow and puts you at a disadvantage up close. The truncheon attack is best reserved for when suddenly confronted with close quarters combat. The rapid fire ability only lasts long enough to take out one, maybe two enemies. His best ability is the Scanner Beacon, which reveals enemies in a limited area, but can be triggered to call in a remote bombardment. This is useful for clearing an objective of enemies, but of course, only works outdoors. The Sith Trooper is my favorite infiltrator. The STW-48 blaster rifle is accurate with a good rate of fire, and like the ARC Trooper, aiming the blaster activates a secondary fire ability. Seeker Tactics only reveals the four closest enemies, but can reveal more by getting kills. Combat Rush is similar to the Assault Class Vanguard with the limited time speed boost. It begins regenerating your health, and getting kills will extend its active time. The Oppression Grenade limits enemy health regeneration, and while it doesn't deal high damage, it can get you quite a few assists. The Empire's ISB agent's appearance is based on Agent Callus from Star Wars Rebels, and like him, is adept at melee combat. And when defeating enemies with melee strikes, you replenish a portion of your base health. Like the Sith Trooper, Imperial Intel reveals the four closest enemies, but increases with kills. Double Your Effort regenerates the base health of nearby allies, but also regenerates her own when it applies to at least one ally. Assault Training increases sprint speed and reduces the damage she takes while active. Finally, the Ewok Hunter may only have a bow and arrow with limited range, but as long as an enemy is in view, the aim is automatic. You just hold the fire button down and he'll let loose those arrows. These will only hit the body, so if you want to do more damage, you'll have to aim and shoot manually. 
If you get close, the Ewok Spear is fun, but doesn't do a lot of damage. However, in a space with deep foliage, it can be really hard to hit something so small stabbing you in the gut. Hunter's instincts will reveal enemies and even show you fresh tracks. Valiant Horn will decrease damage taken and increase the damage of attacks for a limited time. The Wisties Pouch is a callback to the made-for-TV Star Wars spin-off, Caravan of Courage, an Ewok adventure. He's a fly. Choo, choo, I know. But it specifically calls back to the Wisties, a glowing, flying little fairy thing, and the Wisties Pouch can be used to distract and damage nearby enemies. It's the Ewok equivalent to a flash grenade. Hey, look what I got. It's alive. Aw, isn't he adorable? The Ewok Hunter also has a passive ability in that crouching decreases the recharge time on all abilities, but it can also make you really hard to see in the underbrush of Endor. Now for the tactics. In large part, the Infiltrator suits a more aggressive playstyle, except perhaps in the case of the Ewok Hunter and the Kafex Spy. All four other units can do high damage and maneuver quickly. The Kafex Spy is better at a distance, tossing scanner beacons and dropping remote strikes. The Ewok Hunter is most useful on forest or jungle maps where their small stature achieves natural stealth in and amongst the foliage. With their silent bow and arrow shots and Wisties pouches, they can really frustrate and confound the enemy team. If you have the Sith Trooper, Arc Trooper, Commando Droid, or ISB Agent, playing alongside your hero units makes a very deadly team which can take almost any objective with relative ease. Learn to use your abilities as often as they are available because they recharge fairly quickly. As for star cards, the best three are Desperation, which reduces ability recharge times when damage is dealt to you, Acquisition, which spots enemies who are dealing damage to you, and Stalker, which gives you back health upon defeating an enemy you have revealed with your scanning ability. Interrogation reveals nearby enemies when you defeat an opponent with melee strikes, but this is not as useful when you already have a scanning ability. Evasion gives you one extra evade and recharges your evade or dodge more quickly, but I've never felt like I've had a shortage of dodges or combat rolls at my disposal. To learn how to use the different abilities and to prepare your infiltrator units for use in multiplayer, you'll definitely want to use them in co-op. Here you'll encounter tons of AI enemies, get tons of kills, and earn skill points to upgrade your star cards. You only have to get to level 15 with the infiltrator to fully upgrade your star cards, and in co-op you'll do that in no time, especially on Triple XP Wednesdays. I hope this video helps you with your use of the infiltrator class. Be sure to leave a comment below, tell me your favorite infiltrator to use and why. Follow me on Twitter at BattlefrontSG or at Indiana Gym. And if you like the content here, please visit my virtual tip jar at the link down below in the description to support my further work on this channel. Thanks for watching, may the force be with you, and I'll see you at the rendezvous.